James Lynch here for Bodog. So glad to see my next guest, Kyle Nelson, back in action. He's going to be taking on Jai Herbert, UFC London, July 23rd. Kyle, how are you, man? Uh, doing great. Uh, you know, we're well into the training camp and everything's going good. Yeah, it's good to hear. Uh, last time uh, you fought, September 2020. That's a, a long time. I know, obviously, we've had a pandemic and so many other things go on. Why haven't we seen you in so long? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I had that fight in September of 2020. Um, after that fight, I let the, the UFC know I'd like to move up to 155. Um, again, just kind of that cut uh, was definitely catching up to me in the fights. Even though I was able to make 145, I don't think, um, you know, just like how much I had to malnourish my body and stuff. I don't think my muscles or anything were, were able to recover in time for the fights. So, yeah, so I let the UFC know that I wanted to move up to 155. Um, and then, yeah, and then we just kind of waited, um, you know, stayed in good shape for, you know, like a year and a half or so. And, um, then this summer, um, we heard rumors about maybe, uh, September. So we were talking to the UFC and then obviously that fell through. And then, uh, yeah, then this opportunity came up and again, they asked me, I think to fight at one forty-five. but again, I let them know that I, it just doesn't make sense anymore. They're not going to get uh, like a good product out of me. I'm not going to be able to showcase my skills and, and what I'm capable of. You know, you're going to get like a good good three or four minutes of the monster and then I'm going to crash again. So at 155, I can go three, four, five rounds. It doesn't matter. Okay, that's crazy. I thought for sure you were injured or had something going on because that's a really long time to be waiting. And I know obviously too that, you know, when you move up a weight class or go down a weight class, they have to fit you in because they have like a quota, I think, for how many fighters they're allowed to have in a certain weight class. Um, did you think the days of waiting around for a fight on the regional scene were over? Like, like, let me ask you this. Like, were you surprised that it took this long just because you're in the UFC? It's not like a regional thing where you have guys that don't want to fight you because they're trying to pad their records. This is a different uh, situation. Yeah, yeah, I was I was really surprised. Um, and then after my last fight, uh, that was the end of my four fight contract. Oh, uh, I see. Okay, I wasn't really under contract either. Um, mm. But we were going back and forth with them, basically this whole time. We're like, "Hey, Kyle's ready. Kyle's in shape." They go, like, "Okay, we've got him in mind. We're gonna, you know, blah blah blah." And then just nothing ever came of it. So I was kind of wondering, "Why? Well, you know, I'm not under contract. Um, should I or can I go fight elsewhere?" Or should I kind of wait it out and see if they're going to give me another fight soon? Um, and then, yeah, then they they finally uh, gave me another fight. But yeah, no injuries. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've been training this whole time. Uh, so it's giving me some extra time to kind of, you know, build up to, to 155. So now I'm super comfortable at this weight class. You know, I've been, uh, you know, training here and, you know, getting my food down pat for 155. And, yeah, I'm excited for this next fight. Yeah, that's, that's just crazy that, it, that it's been that long to get it done. Were, was there ever a point you thought you might not be back with the UFC? Because like you said, your contract was up and I'm sure, you know, you're kind of wait. Like, did you have a deadline saying, hey, if I don't get a fight by this time, I, I need to start looking at other options because I need to, you know, feed my family. Yeah, yeah. I was definitely looking at um, the September because everybody's like, oh, they're coming to Canada in September and stuff. And I was like, that'd be two years pretty much on the dot since my last fight. Um, no contract or anything. And nothing confirming that they were going to get me a fight. Um, yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, we'll keep you in mind and stuff like this, um, but nothing for sure. And then, yeah, you know, I, you know, had to pick up a, you know, a little day job, you know, doing some painting and stuff and had to figure out some other ways to kind of cover the bills for now. So uh, yeah, it'll be nice to get back fighting and hopefully, you know, we'll get in this one, knock old Jaya out and then I'll line another one up in another two or three weeks or months after that. So did you sign it? I imagine you signed a new contract. Is it four fights? Because that's typically what the UFC does. Yeah. Well, that's good. Congrats on that. That's good. I mean, I know it took a while, but but at least everything's good. Uh, and then, so you mentioned having to have a day job and going back and everything. Did did people recognize you? Did people know you were a UFC fighter? Or did you try and keep it on the down low? Uh, some people recognize me. Some people don't. Um, and again, it's been like two years since I fought. So I think I'm, yeah. I'm not, you know, at the forefront of you know, a lot of MMA fans, um, minds, I guess, and stuff right now. So yeah, it's kind of, you know, hit and miss. Some people recognize me. Uh, I mean, obviously up in, in Muskoka, you know, around, I was going to say you're, you're like royalty uh, there, you know, especially at Moose Delaney's. I don't know if that place is still kicking, but, uh, you're, you know, that's, that's been one of your sponsors for a very long time, right? Yeah. 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 And they made it through the pandemic. So, you know, that's Good. great. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, well, let's let's talk about your opponent here. Uh, he had a, actually a really good fight in his last one against Taporia. In fact, it looked like he was on his way to winning it, and then I don't know where he gets knocked out. Um, how are you looking at this fight from a style perspective? How do you feel like you match up against him? I think I match up well. Uh, you know, Taporia, I can't remember how tall he is, 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, like, he's he's a fair bit shorter. So, I mean, that, that striking kind of, you know, that kind of makes it a little bit more difficult for him. Um, I'm not so short. I mean, I'm still, I'm still not as tall as Jaya, but I think my, my striking, um, especially technically is, uh, a little bit better than, than Taporia. And then I still carry that power mm-hmm. again. I, I'm, you know, I've been carrying a lot of power for a long time. And now that I'm at 155, I think it's going to show through even more. And then, yeah, my technique's just been getting better and better. I'm working, um, you know, obviously at House of Champions a lot, working with Mike Malau, working at Niagara Top Team. So we work with a lot of guys that are, you know, six foot one, six foot two, some tall guys that I can, you know, work around and, and work on my range and stuff like that. So I think striking wise, I think I match up well against Jaya. And then as far as wrestling and jujitsu, it's not even really, a, you know, a question. I think I've, I've got them pretty, pretty beat in all those areas. That's great. Um, yeah, you mentioned Niagara Top Team. That's like the place to be. It seems like every Canadian's training there right now because obviously they have a really good program and a lot of good bodies in the gym. How long have you been training up there? Because you know you got obviously Anthony Romero, you got Aaron Jeffrey. Uh, who have you had a Who have you had a chance to work with up there? Ah, uh, yeah, everyone. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, Aaron Romero, Malak, yeah. uh, pretty much everybody out of there. Um, yeah. and I think. So I mean, I've I've always kind of trained with with Romero and Aaron and stuff. Just we all used to kind of meet at Parabellum before. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I figured that that connection there too. That, that's cool. Um, so how is the weight cut? You mentioned, you know, going to 155. Is is there much of a cut? How much are you cutting uh, leading into this fight? Uh, yeah, so still cutting, you know, a good a good amount. Um, I think I'm just like walking at what a normal uh, 155er was. Whereas, you know, cutting to 45, I was walking around what a normal 55er would be. And then sometimes the UFC would give me, you know, a couple weeks, three weeks. And um, so I'd really have to crash to get down to that 145. Whereas this one, I think we got the fight on like six weeks. Mm-hmm. So like might be the most notice I've gotten for a UFC fight. Yeah, it's and, nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And and so we've been able to, you know, really look at my, my nutrition. I'm allowed to eat a lot more food, which means I'm able to train much harder. Um and I'm able to, you know, go 110% for every training session. And, you know, I'm not really getting tired anymore. So it's great. Um, and I get, I, I felt a little bit like that in, when I was fighting at 45, just we would have to really structure my food where I would, I would have energy. I'd go hard for an hour, but then I would crash and I'd like sleep. And then I'd wake up, train again, and sleep. Now I train hard and, you know, I've got time to go recover or do some yoga or do a walk. Like I've, I've got energy, you know, after training, between training to take care of recovery and everything else that, uh, you know, we also need to do along with the hard training sessions. When are you flying down there and who's making the trip? I'm sure Kua Lin will, will be going with you. Who's, who's going to be making the trip and, and what was sort of the timetable like going forward? Uh, yeah, so we're going to fly, I think the usual, uh, like that Tuesday morning, um, for fight week. And then I'm going to have, uh, crew Lynn in my corner and Mike Malott's coming out. Oh, proper Mike is coming. That's awesome. What, what a good guy to have around. So that's, uh, and, and by the way, that was so cool. His debut, uh, him knocking out Mickey Gall. And it was, I'm sure just that must've, you know, even given you a little bit of a boost, just seeing, uh, Hey, you're training with a guy here who's really making a statement. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I was very excited. And, you know, I've trained with Mike off and on, you know, most of my career, yeah. um with him traveling around and stuff but he's been spending a lot more time uh in canada now and, it, and it's great and then obviously for this fight he's kind of a he can really mimic my opponent's style uh mike's a little bit taller mm-hmm. um yeah i mean not only is he a great training partner but then he he really knows how to kind of break down fights um you know and and really pick apart opponents and and give me good feedback with that too yeah, really good coach as well. Um, how's this fight playing out on July 23rd? I mean, you get to go into the UK and, and potentially, uh, you know, take out a hometown guy. I mean, that's got to feel great. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be very similar to my fight against Polo Reyes. You know, I'm going to be going in there expecting the crowd to, you know, be, you know, booing me and going crazy and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it's never affected me before. It's not going to affect me this time. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take my time a little bit with Jaya. I mean, if he wants to, you know, rush in and, and run into a hard shot and go to sleep early, I'll, I'll abide him. 
Um, but if not, I'm, I'm fine, you know, picking them apart for a little bit and, uh, you know, looking to finish them in the second round. How are your kids doing? I know we've been doing interviews for a long time. I remember when your firstborn was, was born, this was years ago. And how old are they now? Because I've, I've got two kids myself now. And so and even they're getting older. So they, they got to be up there. Yeah, yeah. So Corbin, he is seven now. Oh, uh, he'll okay. be eight in, in September. And then Griffin, he is two, two and a half. Nice. So, yeah, that's cool. Are your kids doing martial yeah, arts as well? Uh, not so much. Um, they're doing like a, like, uh, Griffin, he's still pretty young. So he doesn't do oh, a yeah, of course, too, you can't really do much, probably just water babies or something. Right. So, yeah. um, but yeah, so your, your seven year old, is he, is he in any sports at all? Yeah. So hockey, oh, soccer, baseball, pretty much everything. Um, I've done a little bit with him, uh, as far as martial arts and stuff. And he seems really interested and wants to do it, but his mom's not really a, a big fan. So she kind of put like an X and A on that. Um, okay. But yeah, I'm going to try and get him into it a little bit more, um, hopefully in the future. Yeah, I was going to say my four year olds in jujitsu and it's it's so good. Like it's it's translating into so many other things as school. It's just it's going so well. So that's why I was curious if uh, if your son had got into it. And I was going to say if he's into hockey, just go hang out with uh, Mike Malott's brother. He plays uh, for the Winnipeg Jets, which is pretty cool. Yeah, he was here, uh, I think, last week. Oh, cool. Mike brought him by some pad work and stuff. So yeah, it's good. Kyle, thanks for doing this, man. Excited to see you back. It's UFC London, July 23rd. If there's anyone you'd like to thank, any sponsors, any social media, uh, the floor is yours, sir. Yeah, I mean, as always, thank you uh, to Mussolini's. Uh, we got Sheath Underwear, Muskoka Renos, the Sport Lab, uh, and then uh, Muskoka Martial Arts, uh, kind of the gym I opened up uh, up in Muskoka, House of Champions, uh, you know, and then my coaches, Crew Lynn, Mike Malott, and uh, all the friends and family that have been helping out and my girlfriend Claudia for uh you know taking care of all my food and all that stuff it's uh you know it's been a much smoother training camp now that I've got some some good food and I don't have to stress too much about that stuff 